all because of partnerships and networks. Having said all that, I know time is not there. Our chancellor and members and our guests I'm requesting that I stop here. Wish you nice presentation. Wish you nice discussion. And all of you, may God bless you. Thank you. And she did a great work, a great work, and introduced almost everybody in this room. We want to once again welcome those who joined us. We have the program with us, and uh, because of time, you will allow me to say let's move on. I want to invite Professor Dashum to take us to the next session of the program. Mogis has been Professor Professor Kinapio, <laughs> Professor Dashum. And I'm chairing the session. Hello, Bishop, Mr. Speaker, Board of Trustees, University Council, Senate members, Senior Managers, Top Management, the graduate. The professors, our visitors who have honored this function, the staff, bless you. I take this honor to welcome you to this function. Uh, on our program, um, I'm going to share the session where our guest speaker. Mr. Johnny Makoha is going to present on the theme Agribusiness Technopreneurship for Institutional and National Development. <laughs> Mr. Johnny Makoha is the Avis County Representative, Avis Foundation. He has worked with Avis Foundation in various countries and assumed the current position in 2009. I know you tell us more about himself and Mr. John McQuarrie will come you to present to this gathering. writing. 
But however, when I received this invitation, I had already been here before, and I was positively impressed by what I saw and the people I met. So amid these little challenges, I said, I have to be here. Come, sunshine, come rain. Our topic today is agribusiness to technopreneurship for institutional and national development. But allow me to anchor this topic on a global problem that affects us more, especially in Africa. Today, most of us, in one way or another, we are linked or related to youth. And sometimes I try to consider myself as one, but they keep saying, my age doesn't allow. I would want to look at this topic in the lens of youth employment. And there are valid reasons to anchor this topic in youth employment. There are certain things we all agree about. And one of them is that the future of our world depends on the quality of the youth. And sometimes we commonly refer them as future leaders, but many times they want to start leadership now. And I think we need to start recognizing that. In order for the youth to take up this mantle, they will need to be well educated, they will need to be skilled, they will need adequate professional experience <coughs> with an entrepreneurial mindset. And I dare say that if I wasn't cared for as a youth, chances are that I wouldn't be standing before you right now. That's why for me, it makes it important that we anchor this on youth employment. But maybe we are not alone. The International Committee committed itself globally under Agenda 2030 for sustainable development to reduce the number of youth that are in employment, education, or training. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that global agenda, probably better than I. And I quote, it said, as we embark on this great collective journey, we pledge that no one will be left behind, recognizing that the dignity of the human person is fundamental. We wish to see the goals and targets made for all nations and peoples for all the segments, we will endeavor to reach the farthest, the farthest, and I emphasize the farthest behind, fast. <clears throat> that was a commitment, an international commitment. <clears throat> Therefore, to ensure that our youth are in uh, To ensure that our youth are in decent employment is not a favor, but a matter of global survival. However, the statistics don't have good news for us in this city. The International Labor Organization Global Report of March 2019 indicates that the youth employment is a huge global problem. 
it's which is a negative trend because in 2008 it was 22 so we're assuming there should have been a growth but it looks like it was a negative one these statistics drop further when they are gender segregated with 30% of the females young ladies not being either in employment, education, or training. Our continent as a whole carries the burden of more than 22% of our young people being out of employment. And yet, the story is different for adults. Within the adults, and now we talk about age, in this case I refer to 24 and above. This is the age that removes me from being youthful. There has been a more positive trend in employment. And yet the youth bulge and its impacted on employment has dire consequences for Africa. Hundred million people between the ages of 15 to 35 and I am told it's the youngest population in the world. We have close to 10 to 12 million of youth seeking unsuccessfully to enter the workforce. This population is expected to double by the year 2050. Putting more pressure on communities, we need to find a solution. That's why I wanted to anchor our topic today on youth employment. But I don't want to... We have opportunities. On one hand, agriculture accounts for a third of Africa's GDP, current Africa alone. The sector employs majority of Africans, and it is a key driver for sustainable and equitable growth across the continent. However, the sector's Larger than potential has in effect remained untapped. And I think I was happy <coughs> that I see the direction and that probably she has recognized what I'm talking about. Apparently, for the youth, the agricultural sector is not looked at as a viable sector for employment and it remains highly unattractive to the youth. You know, they are by mistake. <laughs> At the time, I wanted to do medicine. I wanted the name doctor in front of my wishes. But then it didn't happen. That's how much we shy agriculture. Of course, high risks, necessitating innovations, and improved techniques. Sometimes we say we want to make agriculture cool for the youth. When I say cool, the youth understand that. <laughs> the World Bank categorized Uganda on an agriculture dependent economy, which means that its development, the development of our country, whether we like it or not, whether there is oil or not, will be driven by agriculture, as a matter of fact. So while we are searching for oil, agriculture will remain our green oil for a long time. 
Therefore, there is need to turn this downward trend in youth employment to innovation, agribusiness, entrepreneurship, as many as it is for institutional and national development. And when I was given this topic, I found an elephant in the room. I'm sure some of you came here also wondering what is innovation, what is agribusiness, what is technopreneurship. When I first heard my staff talk about agropreneurs, I asked them, what's that? <laughs> you know, they are all youth. Well, innovation is the process of making changes, small or large, radical or incremental, to products, processes and services that result in the introduction of something new for organizations that add value to customers and contributes to the knowledge, the knowledge store or the stock of knowledge of the organization. But Steve Jobs gave us a much simpler definition. But since the academicians here, I wanted to learn the full course. Steve Jobs said, innovation is simply the ability to see change as an opportunity and not a threat. And I might want to agree with him. The purpose of this discussion Agribusiness is considered as agriculture productive for purposes of this discussion. Agribusiness is considered as an agriculture conducted in strict sense, or at least making out something. Something commercial, bringing back some money. And then we have the fancy word. Technopreneurship. I was told it is a marriage between two words technology and entrepreneurship. Of course, once we separate them, then they become easier to understand. While entrepreneurship means the practice of consistently converting good ideas into something profitable. Technology is the application of knowledge to human work. When I, this is a definition I remember also when I was in <coughs> engineering classes, agricultural engineering classes. Therefore, technopreneurship is the merging of knowledge and technology with entrepreneurship skills requiring not only technical knowledge, but also a thorough understanding of creativity, the innovation process, marketing, finance, and strategic thinking. There are people who argue that what separates technopreneurship from the traditional business operations is innovation. Technopreneurship involves producing and processing innovative, high-value products or creating innovative systems to serve consumers. Because of this, technopreneurs are considered to be the country's future. Future wealth creators, and the ones who will drive our economy. Of course, today we see simple examples of this. If you consider I hear Uber, before we had the taxi concept, if you didn't know where they are, you wouldn't find them. If you didn't have their telephone number, they would never get to you. Now we just put the device, you say I'm here, the guy says I will be there, he doesn't even ask you where are you, and he will be there. So we see this change. 
But I also talk about the institutional development to have a common understanding as the ability of an organization to relate to other organizations towards achievements of mutual objectives. Of course, many times when we talk about institutional development, we tend to remain at the mission, vision level. But I think in my course of employment and work, I've come to understand that